Bizarre Brain Comics. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hello, my comic book friends, and welcome to Bizarre Brain Comics. I am Gary, your host. And this is where I like to take a look at some older comics, talk a little bit about the characters and creators, and examine the stories and the art. It's been a few weeks. This time I'm going to go back and take a look at an, uh, another bunch of uh, books from my bookshelf, my bathroom reading bookshelf. Mm. My Beethoven is getting a little too loud here. That's better. Okay, and we're going to start with some... Start here with... Hmm. I've actually covered some of this before. I showed some of, the, some of this before, but not in this context. Amazing Adventures, number 30. Featuring... Kill Raven, and this is from uh, 25, must be what, 74, 75, what year was that? 75. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and the title originally started as War of the Worlds. I've covered it as War of the Worlds before. And then we have bag here with <clears throat> number 32 with Kill Raven. And here's and the other side is 21 of Kill Raven. And of course, these <clears throat> are with uh, various artists, but primarily P. Craig Russell and uh, Don McGregor do doing the writing on those. <clears throat> then, mm, from DC Comics, ooh, John Carter of Mars Ed by Edgar Rice Burroughs. <clears throat> And uh, this is the stuff that was uh, original, originally published as a backup in their, their Tarzan, uh, uh, DC's Tarzan title, and then uh, reprinted and, and completed in uh, Weird Worlds. And in this, I plan on, on doing uh, one on this. And this features, oh, and I don't think that's the best cover. I think that's um, Howard Chaikin on the cover. I'm not positive. It doesn't say. I think it would have been better had they used uh, um, Murphy. Um, look, would have looked better with a Murphy Anderson cover, because <clears throat> Murphy Anderson did the artwork for for most of this stuff. Had some and did some beautiful, beautiful work. John Carter of Mars. Also has some Howard Jakin and uh, Sal Amendola art, <clears throat> and even some Gray Morrow. Well, one uh, chapter has Gray Morrow, and in this they com combined. Uh, uh, started with a, an adaptation of um, uh, Princess of Mars, and then about halfway through that, uh, they skipped over to in the middle of uh, the Gods of Mars. So they combined uh, two novels into one and didn't complete actually uh, do the entire entirety of either one <clears throat> but it is a very good adaptation otherwise uh, and here we have Martian Manhunter see you see a theme here with the Mars thing uh, Martian Manhunter number three and this is when he got the uh, uh, Manhunter got the different costume now, I kind of like him better without the, this costume and this is from, jeez, uh, I can't, uh, at, uh, oh, 06, it says right there, <clears throat> 2006, and I've done some Martian Manhunter before, and I will again, I like the Martian Manhunter, but as I said, I prefer him. I, I do like that costume design, but not for him. 
And then we have here from Spec Publications, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, number three, reprinting. This is this is by Rick Yeager, so this would have been in the late 40s, early 50s, oh, 52 to 53, uh, reprinting uh, Buck Rogers comic strip. And I got this about 20 years or so ago. This is from, actually from uh, 2001. And I, <clears throat> this is the only version, uh, reprint like this that I've ever seen. And then from Wildstorm, which is a, was a, a part of DC Comics from 2006, Claw the Unconquered. I've got other Claw stuff I plan on, plan on showing. And this is I can't I can't make out the the art the the name of the artist. And I like Claw the Sword and Sorcery. I wasn't thrilled with the conclusion of the title, but. And they even did a did a crossover with Claw and Red Sonia, and I have the uh, I have that, and I did like that. Then we have this is uh, Dynamite Entertainment presents the Green Hornet. <laughs> and this is a, a new, an original cover, and it has an ad on the back for Kevin Smith's. Uh, uh, Green Hornet story, but this is reprinting Golden Age uh, uh, Green Hornet stories from the comics, not from not from the newspapers, but uh, from the uh, my as far as I can tell, it's not from the com uh, newspaper, but from the comic books. I like the Green Hornet. Then we go to. Doctor Strange, number 22. It's 30 cents, so this would have been about, what, 77, 78? <laughs> 77, yep. Uh, written by Mar uh, Marv Wolfman and uh, Rudy Nebris doing the interior artwork. And some some uh, lovely stuff. I really want to find some of the Frank Bruner uh, do, uh, Doctor Strange, and I always had the. They've always put Doctor Strange in with the superheroes, which is fine to an extent, but I think it should be more of, of a horror comic, uh, but, but more of a horror than a straightforward superhero type. Just, just have him magical. Then we have the New Adventures of Superboy. With uh, art by Kurt Schaffenberger, written by uh, Kerry Bates. This is number 21. So this would have, 50 cents, this would have been about what, 81? Yeah, 1981. You can add. You can see some of the Kurt Schaffenberger. Uh, of course, he was highly stylized, and he did a lot of the, of course, Schaffenberger did a lot of the art for a lot of the uh, uh, Superman. Uh, related titles Jimmy Olsen Lois Lane uh, Superboy and before that he had uh, years before that he had done uh, a, a lot of the uh, the Shazam Captain Marvel characters and we move away to this is Dead in the West number one by Joe R. Lansdale and who is this yeah Tim Truman this is some really cool, weird stuff. Is, is it is the interior art Tim Truman too? Yeah, yeah, I think so. No, uh, uh, Jack Jackson. Black and white western, weird western stories. Dead in the West, and I think this might. And since it said adapted, I think this was from a. Uh, from a uh, a book. Now we really change gears. Go to the big bratty book of Bart Simpson. <laughs> from Bongo, of course. Got this second hand. <laughs> and I get a kick out of it. I haven't, I haven't watched any new 
any new Simpsons in ages. I've read any new Simpsons in ages. I don't even know if they're still publishing Simpsons in, in comics. If they are, I haven't seen any. And, and I have various artists, of course. Uh, my favorite Simpsons stuff is the, are the uh, Tree uh, Treehouse of Horror. And then go to Easy Wolves. E. Z. Wolf's um, Astral Outhouse. This is by it's a small uh, by Ted Richards. And this is uh, uh, a from seventy seven, and it's reprinting comic strips from a college newspaper, but it's of an un underground nature and some really unusual stuff going on in here because it's uh, <laughs> and then we have this graphic novel of Civil War Adventure written by Chuck Dixon with art by Gary Quappets I, I hope you pronounce I'm pronouncing that close enough and this is all just stories from the Civil War and I think they're supposed to be true stories but I am not I'm not positive on that, with some really fine, fine artwork, if you can see that. And it's Dover Comics and Graphic Novels. Some really nice stuff there. Then we go, we go to Japan with a manga, it's a shoujo beat manga. It is Tale of the Moon. This, this is Number seven, I, this is a, uh, a library discard, got it, and I still have not read this. I've started it a couple of times, and I ne never got to very far into it. It's a romantic ninja adventure, whatever the heck that means. And, of course, your stand, standard manga-type artwork and storytelling. So you can probably read the whole thing and, and get almost nothing of the story. Uh, with a, a, if it's got the page depending on the pacing there uh, and but most of the, the manga that's the back uh, most of the, the manga pacing is ridiculously long so you could read volume after volume after volume and get a story that you could probably have in uh, three or four issues of a standard American comic then we stay with Japan and this is not a comic this is uh, Godzilla by Adam Woog <laughs> and it's actually a children's book and this is also a, uh, a library discard I'm a big Godzilla fan and I saw this I had to take had to get it and it's and it's just uh, find more less text more pictures uh, a lot of, of pictures and uh, uh, text talk about the history of, of uh, and development of Godzilla, if I can, where are all the good photographs? I, I, when I know I've got some good, there we go, there's a good picture of Godzilla. Gojira. Then here's one that I, not necessarily this book, but I do intend covering this. The Far Side Collection. Always good for bathroom reading. The Far Side by Gary Larson, The Curse of Madam C. <laughs> a really nice, nice cover illustration, and then on the back. And of course, everyone should be familiar with the great Gary Larson's uh, um, cartoons. Of course, a single panel gag cartoon, uh, but just on the weird side and had a, a lot of stuff about science. In fact, in, man, I don't know, whenever I do go deeper into Gary Larson, uh, uh, I'll mention it again, that uh, <clears throat> he actually made a little bit of, of anthrop, um, not anthrop, uh, a lot of, he has a lot of anthropology uh, cartoons too, but then uh, effect in paleontology. In fact, at the, um, then was the Museum of Natural History here. They had a whole, uh, um, a whole show of his, uh, his, of his paleontological cartoons. 
and he had an effect on paleontology in that in one cartoon he had the uh, uh, cavemen and a dinosaur it happened to be a stegosaurus and with a big club on the end of its, ta its tail and uh, and, so, <laughs> and there's about caveman fag and uh, uh, being hit with uh, the, the tail and he called and he called it the thagomizer <laughs> thagomizer uh, so it just so happened that paleontologists had never had a name for that big club on the on the stegosaurus tail so now they adopted that as the official name of that is so it is called the thagomizer and I'll tell that again whenever I get, get around to doing doing some Gary Larson. And then another one that's not a comic, but I really like, is Film Facts Magazine. <laughs> Featuring, this is, this is from, oh, must be over 20 years ago. The Making of Forbidden Planet with this great Forbidden Planet um, Robbie the Robot cover. And of course it has articles and a lot of photographs. And here's some artwork, this featuring artwork, Harley Brown, the book, that's an ad. Come on, where's some of the good, there's a lot of good photographs. Here we go, here we go. Another thing on for Robbie from Forbidden Planet. Lots of good stuff from ads. There's some ads for some sexy movies on the back. It's Dr. Jekyll and Mistress Hyde type things. Uh, silly stuff. And so, that is all I've got for you this time around. <laughs> with a bunch of good reading material from the bathroom the bathroom of hell <laughs> thank you for joining me please like share and subscribe and do leave a comment and let me know what you think about any of these books and remember comics are art